Hi everyone, Dorota Palicka, international nail artist and educator here and today we are going to do an amazing nail art. How will we preview of it in here? Yeah, that's what we are going to create today. I hope you really enjoy it. If you do, let me know in the comments below as I'm really looking forward to reading them all. Also, if you're new in here, don't forget to subscribe as there is lots of tutorials coming up every Monday, Wednesdays and Saturdays. So let's start! We are going to have a fun with those 3D flowers, uh, so you can have a look through it. Um, it is kind of stuff which you could do it on your clients and uh, they could easily wear it because it's a kind of flat 3D. Um, so I will demonstrate to you how to do this kind of um, stuff. <laughs> I've got two tips red in here <laughs> and my two favorite colors. Cameraman is going to laugh in a second. <laughs> yes, 155 and 158 and you know this could be is just perfect together. Um, I'm just going to paint this background and I will on the one I will swap the colors. Um, so this one is going to go half of the tip this way. Mm, you don't have to be very fussy uh, how you apply it uh, because we are going to cover the, the joining place with the uh, crystals <laughs> and then 158 so 158 is a little bit darker one and you can go really close to it now in a minute someone will ask how would you paint it on the client obviously not upside down so on the client i would paint it this way so and i would start probably from the top and then do the bottom part. Okay, cook it in. And that's what I'm going to show you on this tip. So I will do it like on the client. <laughs> on the tips we tend to go for the easy way, uh, like, you know, twist them upside down and do different things. So I will paint from the cuticle. I will do my twist. And then I would swap for the darker one. And then cook it. So the first tip is ready. You could, of course, use also the small brush and be very precise with the joining place. I'm kind of trying to save the time. I will also show you some more advanced um, acrylic flower designs as well. Uh, I actually really uh, enjoy doing uh, flowers. Um, 
The only trouble is I'm quite sensitive to the acrylics, so I have to watch it to do not overexpose myself to it. But I love doing them. And then cook it. Okay, so I just let my tips cure properly. And on my mixing palette, we are going to grab the French gel. You don't need a lot, just a drop of it. And then D-liner brush. Actually, I'll do a difference, uh, just so it's not uh, too boring for you guys. So on this one, on the lighter one, I'm going to do the dots, just so we've got something slightly different. So this is a design which will still go really well with it. Couple dots. On the other one, we will do the lines. Well, I have touched this one. And again, I suggest you start from the top, as you don't have to be as precise uh, with your lines on the top, like on the bottom. I'm not sure if you have noticed how I'm picking up the paint, so I'm kind of dragging the product, so my brush gets into a nice line. Um, like when I'm painting the swirls, so say example, those kind of pattern, there is a tutorial on that as well. I would pick up to get the blob of the product, so I can do like a swirly part. Uh, for lines, I pick up the product like I would want to dry, uh, draw the lines. and then give it a cook. We want to also add some sparkle and you've got two cho like I've got, I had two choices in my mind. One was the Aurora pigment and actually I'm going to use it. Uh, let me grab it. So that's what we are going to use. The pink Aurora flakes and I will apply them with the base gel. So a drop of the base gel Dip in my brush with the base gel and just pick them up. They're really flying, <laughs> uh, like they're so delicate. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking those Aurora Freak. Oh, wow, that was a good choice. <laughs> and I'm just applying a couple flakes more into the top part of the design and then cook it. They are so beautiful, those flakes. You don't want too much of it. 
Now, if we are going to be really fussy, I would suggest you grab the top coat, you apply the top coat, you buff it over, and then reapply the top coat. Um, you will get a really nice um, light line. So when we want the nails to be um, absolutely perfect, like, let me see the camera, there we are. So you can see it, that's the light line. I'll show you with the dotting tool. You can see it as like, it doesn't go straight, it's broken here at the dot, then it goes like this, like this, like this, like this, okay? This doesn't look attractive. Here again, we've got the broken light line. And when, when I do the tips like for my best displays, I would always buff the top coat. So when you look into this one, it has buffed top coat. You can see the light line goes straight. Like I don't have those broken line as much as I did on the other tip. Uh, it looks much nicer. Um, again, I wouldn't use this technique in a salon, uh, but I would use this technique uh, if I want to really show off my work. <laughs> okay, so you can see the difference how the light reflects in there. There are some imperfections. Um, I'm actually going to buff it. Um, I know it will take a little bit longer for a tutorial, but I really don't want to rush this one as much because the flowers are going to be so pretty that we don't want to spoil the look. So let's cook it. Put this on the side. We don't need that anymore. And then the first tip, that's the dot ones. Okay, so I'm just taking a buffer and I'm going to give it quickly a couple scratches over it. And for those of you um, who don't like the gel polish look, like I personally don't like the gel polish look. Um, as you can notice quite often on my nails, you wouldn't, it's really rare that you would see the gel polish like a full color on my nails. So usually I prefer clear gel with some nail art over it rather than just like, you know, those uh, gel polish look. And the reason for it is, is the slight reflection. Uh, ideally, I should always, after applying a gel polish, buff my nails so it kind of gives more of a um, filed acrylic look. And now it is quite nice and smooth, so I can apply a very thin layer of the top coat. I mean, obviously I could buff it more to make it even more perfect. I just want to show you what I mean. Nails which are done this way are always much nicer and you can see it. I've got like much more straighter line when the light reflect to it and it doesn't look as bulky. Even that we have applied the second layer of the top coat. So technically it should look more bulky, but actually it doesn't. And quite often you guys asking me this question like, why would you bath? the nails. You could just use the matte top coat. Yes, we could use matte top coat totally. It's a huge time saver. Um, I mean, obviously here in this case, I could just straight away go into the acrylic flowers, but I want this tip to look nice. Pulling it. Actually, even more. And then we can move on into the acrylic flowers. They are still kind of, gosh, almost a basic flower, really, uh, what we are going to do. Okay, cook it in and let's do, so I have uh, used the acrylic liquid uh, powder and liquid and a powder. Uh, powder is in a mega white color and they are medium to fast setting uh, acrylics. Um, so in this temperatures, it's actually a quite nice temperatures. So uh, I don't have to add acetone to it. Sorry, I'm just tearing apart. 
some tissue. Uh, sometimes when I want my acrylic um, flowers to set faster, I would add a drop of the uh, acetone. So if you find it like the temperatures is really um, low and you want your um, flowers to set faster, you would just uh, use it a drop of the acetone in it. That's a wee secret, guys. <laughs> And the brush we are going to use is a 3D um, brush. Uh, it's awesome, actually. It is so tiny. Um, I, I love it because it can give you a really nice and uh, precise results, especially that's picking up the right size of the bead is quite difficult with the large brush. So I have just, um, I'm just going to pick up a small bead. And what I like to do as well, quite often for acrylic flowers, I like to even bleed it out on the tissue and then pick it up again. And this way uh, my flowers are setting even faster. Then I clean my brush and we are going to do a tria triangle. Oh gosh, I'm terrible with this one. Triangle shape. So I'm just brushing. Do not rush it really, uh, acrylic flowers takes time. I would say even moon rather than the triangle shape. Okay, so I have created kind of a C, half a moon or a, a shape. Clean my brush and now I'm start going to press it. Usually do not press it too soon. So I can see it, my uh, bit is starting to polymerizing and that's a good time to start pressing. If you press it and the veins disappear, you, you would wait a little bit longer because we want those veins. So now I can start pressing into the shape of the petal. And I really love those veiny look. Um, like I want those veins to be nice and visible. And you can only achieve it if you wait long enough. Okay, so we've got the first petal ready. I'm going to pick up another bit. Again, try it out. You can also, what is awesome as well, you can cut it and pick up the size you want. So if you have picked up too much for a flower, you can just um, cut it and pick up more. I always place the bead again, prep my brush and go into those um, half a moon shape again. So one side, other side. And now I want this um, half a moon shape, C shape, to go a little bit inside the first petal. You also need to take into the consideration that you are going to uh, push those petals out the way. So what I did, I have bring it more inside. Okay, by bring it more inside, I've got some room to press them and they are not going to go outside my flower shape. Again, I need to wait for it to start polymerizing a little bit and then we can start pressing. So that's a little bit too soon. I want a bit longer in the middle. What else you could do is once it is set a little bit, you could lift it from the side. I mean, obviously we are going to do it those kind of more uh, basic, but I'm going to hold it for a couple seconds just so this one petal is a little bit more lifted. And then pick up another bit. Again, wait for it before you place it. You can even dry it out a little bit. And then the next triangle. So I'm just placing it in the spot and then start, I don't know, almost painting with it, like shaping my bow into the shape I want. So this one needs to be even more inside. Okay, so I'm happy with this placement and then I can start 
shaping it into the petals. Uh, when I'm cleaning the brush, I also try to keep it into the really nice point. Okay, again longer in there. Uh, do not place too many petals because then you get this kind of cabbage look. If you find it difficult to do it with many petals, I would suggest the next step would be just the middle. So you pick up a small bead and you just go each side and that's it. Um, if you've got the control over it, you can try squeeze more petals and that's what I'm going to do it. So I'm picking up a very small... <laughs> that was actually a huge bead. <laughs> I'm picking up a very small bit. <laughs> and I'm going into the place where I'm, I've got more of a dry product. So that's the place. Okay, so I want this petal to go there. Wait for it to get ready and then start shaping it. I think if you do not rush and if you do not place um, your brush over too many times, like uh, you can get a really nice result. So do not like go in random ways. Uh, try to kind of control it how you how you're working with your brush and how many presses you give. So that's my powder ready, my product ready, and I'm just doing a small petal here. I don't want to also hide, um, I've got some kind of transition, the pink is kind of starting to be see-through here and the see-through there, I don't want to cover that. Then I'm going to do another very small petal here and a needle. Okay, so when this one is drying, I'm going to straight away do some leaf in here. So now just working a little bit faster. The leaf is a triangle shape again. And again, I want those veins to be visible and then I can press it on this one. Again, extremely small, the tiniest bit ever. So I'm placing it on the wipe and I'm picking up like really the smallest possible bit to squeeze it in there. And then the rest, I can use it for a leaf. And this one, I just want a wee hole in there. The leaf, I'm doing a triangle shape, triangle, oh God. A leaf shape, I'm doing a leaf shape <laughs> and then I'm brushing it in, get into the shape and if I want to I can also press some veins in here as well. Um, just so maybe it doesn't look exactly the same like the other one, I'm going to add one more leaf in here or we should add like a small rose. <laughs> Mm 
no i will add one leaf here and then one in there so look how i'm kind of rolling the product to get into the shape it is too soon to be touched and you can see what's happened it's like i have no nice veins so i'm just going to leave it for now because i want those veins to be visible and shape the other one and then press it into shape again we can maybe even lift this one up a little bit so wait for it to set a little bit and then you can lift one place so it looks even more 3d okay so that's our rules almost finished Light wait for it to set a little bit on the other one i'm going to show you a different slightly different one as well and we will also color it in as well and do some crystal placement so i'm going to wait for this one to set a little bit and then we are going to play with another one So we'll have like the most basic medium and then this one is going to be a little bit um i would say bigger and prettier we'll do slightly different middle so because we have uh, talked through it um, what shape we want and how to do it i'm going to work a little bit faster with this one okay so trying to do more <laughs> so i have placed my bead leave always when you go out uh, go inside the petals leave always some gap then that's the petals i want lifted So we can lift them, we can twist them. In the meantime, I'm just going to grab form.
and leave this one to dry. On the form, we are just going to do a very small middle. So I have to dry it out and place on the form. And then get a um, shape out of it. Okay, so this is a shape you want to get. Wait for it to dry a little bit and then start pressing it down. I usually do two, three, just because some of them might not work um, when I pick it up. Like usually I'm, I am on patient and I would pick it up too soon. So I'm just placing a couple more dots. And these ones are going to be petals. So this is going to be me noodle, and this one is going to be a petal. Now let's try if this is ready. Oh, it is kind of getting ready. So I'm lifting it up and then start rolling it in. Lift it up, press it down, lift it up, press it down. Yes, you could do it with your fingers as long as you've got gloves. Um, I try to really don't touch the acrylics um, as I'm very sensitive to it. Um, like, you know, if I'm overexposed, my lips would tingle really bad. I can get really swollen. So I'm trying to avoid it. And you can see what a beautiful middle we have created. I don't want it to be too, too sticking out because we are not making those really, um, really extremely 3D roses. Um, I can do the tutorials for you on those extreme stuff as well, uh, if you want, guys. But what I'm doing is I'm just placing it nice. And then straight away, I'm going to pick up the petal. So this is a combination of the flat rose with a bit raised middle. Okay, then shape it. Cute squeeze like a very tiny petal. Let me see if any of them are still good. <laughs> they are not and they are yes. <laughs> so basically I would normally, if I would be very fussy about the shape of the rolls, I wouldn't use it. Uh, I'm going just to squeeze this one out and there. This isn't a display tip, so. Okay, so the next petal and then we need to do some leaf in here. We could also do those more extreme leaf. I'm just going to do a wee tiny one in there. And here we should do another middle. So you could also add the middle of the rose. Uh, I used to do uh, run a really popular training actually. It was very, very popular uh, years ago. Um, it was called flower bouquets um, for the acrylic. Uh, we have actually came up with those ideas. Gosh, I can't like, it was 2009, just when all those extreme stuff, like didn't exist much in there. Um, so I had a chance to run those um, very extreme trainings. 
and lots of different places, which was awesome. Let me do one more leaf in here. I mean, obviously, this is still kind of basic stuff. <laughs> okay, that's plenty. So we can move on into the next part because it looks a bit sad and we don't want sad flowers. There is different ways of doing um, the colors. Obviously, you could use color acrylic powders, but you could also use the pigments. You could also use acrylic paint. So like uh, depending on the results you want to achieve, uh, you could use um, different options. Uh, silk flowers are really nice as well. Uh, that's the technique where we're using acrylic paints over the acrylic. Uh, and it looks absolutely fa fantastic, but like a one tip takes like hours to do it so long. So I have dipped in my brush into the monomer and I'm picking up the tiniest ever amount of the pigment. They are just a neon pigments and you know guys like especially I am really trying to don't store too many stuff. I'm not the neon tech. Okay yes I, I've got thousands of the different things in my drawers um, but I'm also liking to use different things for no use the same things for different stuff so quite often you would see me like you know working with the same gels but using it for a slightly different types of the designs and even for the pigments i mean you can do it uh, easily color the acrylic powder so as a beginning nail technician all you need is some white acrylic powder and you could buy those pigments and the pigments are pretty cheap i would say and you could use them for lots of different things you know not only for the acrylics but also for um, some nail art over the gel uh, so it's definitely a nice option and um, i'm just shading it a little bit into my leaves uh, you have because it is a pure pigment you have to work extremely um, little like very little product so i'm using actually the stuff which i've got on my wipe because i don't want to overdo it okay uh, we can close the green one and let's do the pink and the pink i want this one actually i love uh, roses which are those kind of peachy color orangey and like um, you know all sort of different oh oh Oh, okay, yeah, let's do that. Why not? <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to do just a basic one on this one. So this one is going to be just sorry cameraman, sorry guys. Don't want to drop those pigments on the floor. I've got white floor. <laughs> so I'm picking up the pink. Very little. You could use, uh, if you don't feel um, comfy using like a larger brush, just use some small brush. You could easily do that as well. And to really do not flood it too much, just a tiny bit. Okay, so we've got the pink one ready. And then this one. So here I want, actually I'm going to use a smaller brush. Uh, some old old brush which wasn't used in a gel ideally which I don't have it so I'm just going to clean my brush which we have used I do have it I do have it Thanks. okay so pink Inside. Leave the edges white. Then we are going to go into the orange one.
You could do like on rainbow roses. Just very little. And then the light one. That's plenty. You don't want to overdo it. Okay, let's close all this stuff and then obviously it looks empty. It looks like not finished design. And the reason for it is we're missing some bling. Sorry guys, but normally I'm not losing my time on closing the products <laughs> when I'm doing the tutorial, but you really don't want to drop these pigments. That would be a nightmare. Okay. So part two, get rid of that. And then the base gel. So I've got my mixing palette in here. And I'm just going to do a line. Base gel, just a drop more. And then the line in here as well. That's why I told you you don't have to worry too much about the transition in between the two colors because we are going to cover it anyway. My gem picker. <laughs> Cameraman is taking away the pigments. I think he's scared land, uh, making them land into the floor. <laughs> Okay, so I want some pearl. Now guys, I'm not going to give you the links to these pearls. They are so crap, like the color comes off from them. So I'm only using them into the display tips. Um, and obviously because this one is prettier, I'm going to use those ones here. Sorry, I need a bigger desk. We actually got, uh, we have ordered some new desk and I cannot wait. Uh, it isn't a nail desk. I mean, obviously in a studio, I'm doing a tutorials more for you guys rather than doing like a client. So all what I was needing, it was just lots of space, which will be awesome. One and two. Oh gosh, I'm missing one more. Is there any there? Nope, I no, will use the clear one. No, can't use the clear one. It's too nice designed to mess in there. Okay, I can get rid of this huge box and then tiny crystals. Tiny, not huge. Oh, that's two. I don't want to rush this part because obviously there is a top coat um, already on this tip. So we are not going to reapply the top coat and normally you do not put the top coat over your acrylic um, designs because that will uh, get rid of those veins and the details. And you really want to have those details in your design. Okay, that is quite nice. Couple, couple, couple caviar beads. <laughs> I 
You want some where I've got the leaf. And they do really make the design look much prettier. And the last one. And then we are going to give it a cure. Here I want more and more. And the caviar bits uh, looks absolutely fantastic also and um, so inside the acrylic flowers. So here I'm going just a basic line with the crystals to you don't keep you bored. And I'm trying to keep it at kind of wavy line so it's not too straight. It's a really nice combination of the crystals, 3D flowers and some freehand painting. Very romantic design. <laughs> I hope you have guys learned something uh, watching this tutorial and don't forget let me know um, if you want to see those kind of more advanced uh, designs like the a little bit more extreme um, so not necessary on the clients uh, nails but they great to build up your skills and let's check the full set of the nails which we have created <laughs> so I've got this pretty one Let's do it here. So we've got from the most advanced to the basic ones. Oh, this is the biggest trouble always for me. I don't want to damage the tips. Okay. And then the last one. Okay, let's be fussy because they're nice and pretty. And that's what we have created. Well, that looks actually really nice together. Really, really nice together. And that's what we have created today. So. The easiest one, medium one, and then the hardest one. I'm sending you lots of glittery hacks. <laughs> Bye for now.